this video is on temporal frequency. Okay, it's been surmised in the future that there is, in fact, a certain frequency or wavelength uh, that's it's more like a cumulative wavelength, and it comes from all the radioactive elements in the universe at any one point in time, which identifies a certain point in time. Let's talk about half-lives. Half-lives of elements, the decay rates. Given the fact that at any given moment in time, there are elements that are going to decay and they will, after that point, no longer exist. It's almost like a clock ticking down. The combination of all these radioactive elements in existence at, this, say, this very moment in time when I touch this thing, right then, there's no other point in time like that moment when I touch this board. Because at that moment in time, there was, if you stopped everything from de all the radioactive elements from decaying, there would be exactly certain proportions of all the ones that have half lives on the order of billions of years, millions of years, uh, hundreds of thousands of years, tens of thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens, uh, years, months, weeks, days, uh, even hours, and down to seconds. There's different elements that have all these different decay rates. There's some elements, of course, that decay in less than a second. Boom, they're just gone really fast. Well, it's like a ticking clock. It's just like, you know, that I rattled off from the longest to the shortest. It's like rattling off um, millennia, uh, centuries, decades, years, months, weeks, days, and everything like that. It's just almost like taking the times of the half-lives, and you can almost assign a specific moment in time, given the amount of radioactive elements in the universe at that exact moment. So you could, in fact, if you could reconstruct a certain, based on the proportions, moment in time, you could possibly, the theory is, uh, construct a bubble, temporal bubble, and insert yourself into a certain point in time somehow. So here's the thing. Along with this is the fact that uh, you'll notice that there's a... Um, theory in the future, given the next 200 years, they're going to find out, you know what, uh, w given the noticeable uh, observations they made of the universe, that they can see universes ex is still expanding, that the rate is, even though it's very, 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 very minuscule, only detectable over the fact that we've noted the expansion over a couple of hundred years, that there is, in fact, a slowdown happening, a contraction of, of this explosion, this big bang that exploded everything out, it's slowing down. So it's been surmised that we don't know exactly how long, but you know what, there's going to be a certain point in time when the expansion is actually going to stop, and then the universe will actually contract again. And now, that makes sense if you think of a nuclear explosion and a mushroom cloud that explodes out, and at a certain point the explosion stops expanding and then it contracts back again as you've seen in the uh, tapes possibly of nuclear explosive tests and the trees go this way one time and as the wind stops expanding out the trees stand up again and they come back this way. So that's the idea. So there is in fact a belief that there is a temporal frequency and in order to go back in time you have to create a space bubble which that's probably another topic to get into the theory of how you'd have to literally because there is only only so much space in time, that's why they call it space-time, you'd have to forcibly, in order to get somebody back into the past or the future, you'd have to impose them into that time frame, and it would literally push everything else out of the way to have to make room for that imposition of someone else or something else that wasn't there before at a certain moment in time. That's it for now on that temporal frequency.